down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors. Experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Man, I'm glad you tuned back in. I, I guess we're bringing value in the Coach's Corner with my man, Matt Black. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. And so we're trying to help other people be better in whatever endeavor you're doing. It may be coaching other people. It may be coaching yourself. It may be just going down the line. And here's some cool things that we have learned ourselves in the coaching corner. What we want to try to do is hopefully bring some value to your life. Yeah. If we can do that, we've succeeded. Yeah. And I think the easiest way to bring value is like, look, I messed up. Yeah. This is where I'm struggling or this is where (laughs) I'm working. Yep. So here's an interesting thing that has recently have been coming in my mind called value. And so like, I know you should hire better people than you. Yes. I know that you shouldn't be cutting your grass at your house that you, you, two things that you're robbing someone else of a blessing because there's someone in your neighborhood, um, or someone that has a specific lawn care business that needs your lawn Mm -hmm. to fulfill their family and to provide for their children. Right. But we tend to feel like we have to do everything or we're trying to save a dollar. So this is an interesting thing. And so there's a really good friend of my life that, uh, you know, has a business and I'm trying to help this individual and, you know, price structure, it seems like a daunting task to do. What do we charge people for our services? What do you charge people for coaching? Mm -hmm. And so, so this just happened to me. Uh, the other day I was driving down, I have, my wife needs an oil change and it's like way behind. I'm like, we got to get this thing oil change. So I'm like, I got to be a servant. I'm going to, I don't want to take her minivan. And it was so funny. I pulled up to the office and somebody made fun of me and riding the minivan. I'm like, all right, I'm going to roll with the minivan. So I like the minivan, you know, it's rocking the minivan. I like like the minivan. So I'm like, I get all my work done. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go run this errand. So I'm driving down the road. And at first, before I thought I'm savvy, I, 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 I Googled up coupons (laughs) coupons <laughs> for oil changes. I know multimillionaire out here trying to get a coupon. So I got a coupon and I drive, I got to go down the one road and I got to make a right. And I see a guy with a sign that mm-hmm. says oil change 1899. Ooh. And I see, I'm like, this is closer than the oil change place I was going to. Okay. And so I turn in this place mm-hmm. Okay, and I don't know if I should say the name of the place. I don't know. So I turn into a yellow place. I turn in, <laughs> and I'm I'm in line, and a guy, someone doesn't acknowledge me to be there. And so I'm like, well, it's really cool. It's by the bookstore. Hey, I can drop the car off. I can go to the bookstore and read. <laughs> uh, I don't know how long this is going to take. And I'm like, no one's walking up to me. Now, I see a guy in the little thing, and this gentleman walks up to my car. Now, I, I kind of stick my head out. I'm like, hey, you know, am I doing something? He walks up to me. Now, I'm not trying to judge people, but he has a ring in his tongue. Okay. Okay. So now I got tattoos all over me. Mm-hmm. I know that people see my tattoos and they get a little nervous. Mm-hmm. This is in general. I know this. And so I, I didn't see nothing of, of, of your tongue being pierced. Okay. But I was like, where do, you know, what's going on here? You know, I go, how long, how many will change? And he's like, well, you got to park over there. You got to go inside. And, and I just felt like a very bad vibe. So mm. like I've already pulled into the little thing. Yeah. So now he's like wants me to pull out <laughs> and get out. And then he couldn't give me an answer. Like how long it's going to be? He's like pointing to cars. Well, it might be three. I was like, well, how long does this usually take? I don't know. You have to go, go inside and they'll kind of <laughs> give you an idea. And so I was kind of like not feeling good about it. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. So I'm like awkward as uh, you're going to all be, I back up and I just leave, (laughs) which is really good. I think, which is important for you as an individual to sometimes you have to walk away. Yeah. You got to trust your gut, Mm -hmm. especially when you're hiring someone. Oh yeah. Okay. So I drove down the road and so I'm, I'm going, I'm thinking I'm going to the place that, um, with my coupon and it was Jiffy Lube. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I got this coupon. So I'm, I'm like driving down. I got to get this done. I don't want to do this. And I go, I pull into this place. It's super clean. It's called Five Takeaway Mm -hmm. Oil Change. Never heard of the place. And I normally get my stuff done at the dealership. So this is another story. But I I pull in there, super blinged out service. Nice. And it was like bang, bang, super service. And so 
I was like, and then of course I show him the coupon. He's like, sir, that's the wrong coupon. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. And I'm like, the guy, the way the guy talks to me, the way they look at my car was I knew way better service. Yeah. And, and I've never had this happen before. He's like, sir, can you turn your car on and turn your RPMs up between two and three on your odometer so we want to make sure there's no leaks in nice. your oil? I've, have you ever had that done before? No, I haven't. That's All right. So, of course, cheap Van Kalenberg over here. I'm like, oh, you know, how much is this thing? And, mm-hmm. of course, while I'm sitting in the car, I Google it up and I find a coupon for that place. So, I'm super savvy. Nice. So, I, I realize. So, then, the, of course, they're going to hit you with air filter. So, I'm like, it was super service. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, I paid for this service and I was like, I felt like I made the best decision because I paid a little bit more, yeah. But I felt way more comfortable, yeah. And I felt I had a better value, and I think that we're missing out in society, especially these young investors trying to scrap all their way up, mm-hmm. and they're missing the boat like I used to be, not valuing service, yeah. You know, there's nothing like having a very powerful accountant where I don't have to think about it. Mm-hmm. When the bank emails me, where are your quarterly reports mm-hmm. or where is your financial statement in yep. which I would try to save a dollar <laughs> and my last accountant wouldn't do it or he would him and ha about it yeah. and then try to charge me for it. But when you have super service, I mean, you may be paying for that service, but mm-hmm. what does that do for your life? Yeah, And that's our subject today. How that's to create great... value or yeah. how to receive <clears throat> value or how to know when you're stepping over dimes to pick up pennies. Exactly. My dad told me when I was young, buying tools, for instance, he'd say, son, buy the best you can afford. Mm. So here's a, here's a prime example. 2000, the year 2000, right? I bought a, a 18 volt drill, mm-hmm. right? So I would go to see all these other cheaper brands or there's DeWalt, you know, at the time DeWalt was like the best, you know, this which yellow, I still think is still I think up they're there. Great. You know, but it was expensive. And so I went, I was shopped around to find you know, good, good, good price on it. Went and bought it. And I immediately thought, man, I, I just spent a lot. This of money wasn't on the this DeWalt. Trip. This was another I, one. No, I bought the DeWalt's right. Um, but I, the whole time I, I kept thinking, man, I, I, I should have bought a cheaper one. I should have bought a cheaper one. I could have done something else with this money. But you know what? Every time I use that to this day, almost 20 years later, I still pick that thing up and it works like it's supposed to. I'm like, I'm glad I bought that. And here, Versus buying some cheap thing. I'm going to have to take it back to the store when it doesn't work. They give me another. Here, we're going to replace that. I got another cheap thing. You know, so. You know, it's interesting yeah. what, that you say it like that. It gave you confidence. It did. You know, it's interesting. So I was like, I Googled up the word understand value because I was, I was going to do a podcast, but since you were in my life today, I was like, man, this is, this is another coaching thing, I think. Yeah. And I Googled up understand value. And this is what it said. It says, when it comes to happiness, understanding your values is a fundamental building block. Your values influence your behaviors, Mm. your choices and your emotions, your values influence your habits your lifestyle, and your social experiences. Mm, wow. Gets even better. Your values are your motivators and to give you purpose for getting up in the morning. Wow. Here's the interesting thing That's about good. this. When you ha- when you are so cheap, you become cheap. Yeah. And everything in your, if you have a fake purse, mm-hmm. what does that tell you? <laughs> yeah. You're fake. Yeah. So to hire the, ver- like you said, I think you had to say, hey, hire the very best that you can afford. Right. And don't undercut what you can't afford. I know that when I stretch myself, I, I never go back. You know, I remember the, the my last two trucks ago and it was like five hundred dollar a month payment. Mm-hmm. And I think the payment before that was like I was paying maybe three hundred dollars. And mm-hmm. I can afford three hundred dollars. Yeah. But I know when I stretched myself to get a better quality truck and I was a more expensive payment, I never missed my payment and I never went back. And every time you get in that truck, you're like, I'm glad I bought this truck. Exactly. You? You're not regretting it. Like, and so, dang, why did I cheap out here? Yeah, so here's the application. You really need to think and consider what, where are your values and how you're hiring people, yeah. your contractor. I know, here's another example. When I when I used to, and I was, I was going through this today, actually helping someone else about how to hire people. And I have this system, how I hire people off of Craigslist. And I have this whole... 
uh, document written exactly play by play on how to hire someone. Like this is the ad I post. When they respond to my ad, these are the four questions I send them. Then they respond. Then I send them more questions. I create hurdles. So I just weed out the the chaff, the idiots, yeah. and then I, I get on. And so I went back and I looked at what the ad posted just for fun. Mm-hmm. For some light, non-skilled labor work, what do you think my low price was I was trying to hire? Just just curious. Per hour? Per hour. $5 an hour. Okay, well, okay. I don't know. Well, this is interesting because this is several years ago. Yeah. I In my ad, it, it used to say hiring, starting... Pays cash eight dollars an hour. Okay. No, that's nothing wrong, but I don't pay that now. You pay more. I pay way more. Because you want to get better. I want to pay twenty dollars an hour. Exactly. You know how hard that <laughs> you know how hard that has been in my years of of, uh, of hiring contractors or or being a contractor myself and being an investor for twenty years. I thought I was savvy by hiring somebody between eight to twelve dollars an hour. Yep. But when I started really calculating, when you get to be significant, you know, sophisticated investor, you're analyzing how much am I really paying him? Mm-hmm. How many times did he go to Home Depot? Yeah. How much hours did he burn? Yeah. When you hire a guy, this actually came up in a conversation the other day. Uh, when I'm working on a, on, a, on a cost analysis situation, where you know, how many times does it co- cost you to go to Home Depot? Can you can you get the whole order yeah. and order it one time. Yeah. A, it's good for accounting, <laughs> but B, how much are you wasting? Yeah. Now I'm like, if I posted an ad today, it would be starting out at 20. Now, of course, all the yeah. $8 an hour people think they're worth 20. Yeah. But I'm willing to pay way more for better service. Absolutely. If the guy's going to call me back, if I'm going to mm-hmm. pay for someone and I text them, I want them to respond to me. Yeah. And of course, I think the greater the payment, the greater the expectation. Sure. That's so fair. create value and yourself of what your time is worth. That's something else that I was noticing. I'm, I was talking to someone. I know this is a, this is all the Steve Van Kelberg episode. This is what I was trying to tell okay. you. I was trying it's to good. tell you, man. Tell I'm me. along for the ride. Okay. So I was like, bro, I was like, this is a, this is a doctor guy. And I was like, homie, I'm like, how much do you, how much are you worth? And he really couldn't give me the number. Mm. And yeah. I said, well, let's just say $250 an hour. Okay, he's a doctor. Sure. Okay. And I was like, do not do anything that's less than $250 an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you're cutting the grass, it's not worth your value. Exactly. If you're doing your laundry, Mm -hmm. you shouldn't be doing it. Yep. Because your one hour of your level of work could yield how many other things that you could get done. Yeah. What's the value in hiring someone else? And the value we, we get in hiring someone good goes way beyond the hourly wage. Meaning if I hire a good contractor, he may be more expensive, but I know it's going to be done right. We're not going to have to go redo things. I know he's going to show up Mm. and I'm not going to have to drive to the job site multiple times every day just to check on it and make sure he showed up. And so like you talked about stepping over dimes to save pennies, I've done that so many times in my life and it's hard to overcome that, but I'm starting to realize that yeah, yeah, the I value think you get goes way beyond yeah. what you're actually just paying the price tag. You know, and I, I think it boils down to the scarcity mentality that we're mm-hmm. trying to live on super budgets or we're yeah. trying to maximize our dollar as much as possible. And, and, and more nine, more times than I can count that I have been stung in this one area where I'm hiring, I think I found the $15 an hour guy. And he's doing his job, and he he seems nice, but then six months later, I'm going behind him because mm-hmm. I try to cut a corner, and he didn't plumb it right. Yeah, exactly. And then if I really hired a thirty dollar an hour plumber, that would have took one hour. It yeah. took that dude four hours because yeah. it took him two hours to do it, mm-hmm. and then we had to go back and redo it. We spent sixty dollars. <laughs> we, we, you know, if we would have just hired a professional, that's it. And that's how I think of it now. When you know, I was hiring a contractor the other day. And I was like, oh, do you do plumbing? Do you do this? He's like, I don't do any trade trade professions. If it's a licensed trade, I let the professionals do it. Smart. Very smart. Yeah. Well, then if, you, if you're a rookie investor, you need to hear this very well and very clear. If you get someone to do electrical work on your job and the house burns down and you don't have a licensed person doing that, just your insurance is null and void. Yep. So... I used to cut a lot of those corners mm-hmm. thinking that I'm saving some money because I don't want to pay the $60 an hour guy yeah. just to wire an outlet where I can get a $10 handyman to do it. 
Mm-hmm. Now, of course, that's a that's a kind of extreme example. Of course, I'd let my handyman do that. But mm-hmm. the reality is, if I'm swapping out a power box, a hundred amp box mm-hmm. in the back, which I've, you know, whatever, I'm going to hire a licensed electrician to get it done right. Yes. All right. Any other examples of you and value? Value is something that you need to look at yourself. Meaning, the things I'm going to do, the things I'm going to say yes to. I would ask myself, am I going to be satisfied with what I just charged? Meaning that sometimes we may be desperate to get a job or Mm. get a gig. So we say, okay, there's this gig and it's going to put me in a bad situation. I'm not, it's not really my wheelhouse, but I'm going to go do it because I need the money. Yeah. But that it ends up costing me more than what I made from that gig in terms of stress, emotional energy. And Mm. not not only that, the perception that we have in this world, the, the self-worth knowing that, I'm the best at this instead of doing something I'm not good at. I'm, I'm, so we need to value ourselves, place a value on ourselves and our time and our abilities. You, know, you, did, you just yeah. said something that was extremely powerful. You said that the stress, the time, all these these derivatives off mm-hmm. of not hiring the right person. Yes. Think of that your life would be much better <laughs> if you didn't have to think about it. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, young investors like they need bookkeeping and they don't want to spend for a bookkeeper. And like, have you done a 1099 before at the end of the year, or you've had someone yelling at you, or if you had an audit before Mm -hmm. and that little $200 or $300 a month that you should be paying for bookkeeping, you're complaining about. Yeah. Just the level of stress or I, I, I know someone that would lock themselves in a room for six hours to get all their bookkeeping done. What in the world? Yeah. Again, you're, you. So, what what would that cost you if you would have am that mm-hmm. out? Maybe a couple hundred bucks, fifty bucks. Yeah. I, I I don't know. Yeah. But was it the stress is worth diarrhea, no. Mis, no. miscommunication, not turning in the right documents? You look like a buffoon. Yeah. And then you're then you're scrutinized by the government. Mm-hmm. But what we don't see the value. Like so, I'm willing to pay more. I love Jim Rohn says. If you just whistle while you work, you probably make an extra 10%. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, and so yeah. if the guy gives better service or I know that he's going to show up on time, he's worth be paying him more money. For sure. So that's the application today. So value, reevaluate who you're paying, how you're paying them, and is it giving you the value? Are they calling you back fast enough? Mm-hmm. Are they giving you the reports that you need? Are they are they going to call you back when you say, hey, you didn't put the trim right. You forgot to cock this area. I noticed this the other day on, on, on my own residence where there's a room that one wall that they forgot to cock the trim. Mm. You know, is the guy, the $10 an hour guy, what he's on a, he's on, he's raised his rate and he's on another job site. Do you really think he's going to call, come back and finish something that he forgot? Right. Right. Yeah. But the guy that you probably pay $30 for or $20 an hour for mm-hmm. that you, you know, he remembers that you paid him on time and he's integrity and does a good service. He's like, mm-hmm. you know, I did mess up. I'm going to go fix that. Yeah. Because the $10 an hour guy is like chasing more money mm-hmm. and the other one's trying to do good work and he should be rewarded for that. Yeah. And I, I love the working with people. Obviously we, we want to shop around and get the best deal we can, yeah. but there is a time, there's a difference between being thrifty or being savvy and being cheap. Mm. Yeah, we want to be savvy. We want to be thrifty, but we don't want to be cheap. Yeah, and we awesome. don't want to be known as that. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the coach's corner today. If you have a question, remember you can email us uh, or check us on Facebook or go to the savvypodcast dot com and just leave a voicemail, and uh, we'll get your questions answered. What is the savvy boot camp? Are you struggling to get to the next level as a business owner, as an investor? Do you want to multiply your income? Sign up for the Savvy Bootcamp, a strategic and supercharged one night and one day event designed to shortcut your learning process and propel you forward. Just value, no upsells, and an intimate setting to build relationships with like-minded investors. We will be covering how personality profiling can make you a millionaire, outsourcing and the nitty gritty of maximizing your property management scaling your business through systems and automation, technology hacks you should be using every day, and how to raise private money. Go to www.savvybootcamp.com now 
to register or to find out more. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 